Cersei Lannister, the cruel and cold-hearted manager of the Iron Throne. To understand why Cersei is the way that she is and how she chooses to manage the Seven Kingdoms, you must first understand her struggles. As a mother, the greatest gift is the pure and innocent love you have for your children and their love for you. In this episode, The Lion and the Rose, Queen Cersei experiences the first of many losses, starting with her beloved son, King Joffrey. It is the day of his wedding to the pure and innocent Marjorie Tyrell. She sees Joffrey's evil side, but thinks that she can tame him enough to make it as his wife and help him manage the Iron Throne. She embraces his dark thoughts and shows him love and compassion. She introduces him to the people of King's Landing and shows him what it feels like to be charitable and give back to his people. Marjorie shows him what superior value can do for him. The service of helping and giving back to his people can produce a value for them worth more than what Joffrey's competitors for the Iron Throne can offer. If he can focus some of his energy on being a kind king to the people of Westeros, he can gain the supporters he needs to maintain his claim as the ultimate ruler slash manager. Superior value contributes to giving Joffrey that competitive advantage that he needs. To give some background of why Joffrey needed this competitive advantage, we must address the fatal death of Ned Stark, father of Arya and Sansa, who held the position as Hand of the King to his dear friend Robert Baratheon. As Robert lay on his deathbed, Ned Stark wrote the last words and requests of Robert, slightly altering the letter to state that Joffrey was not the heir to the Iron Throne. Ned Stark knew of Cersei's affair with her twin brother. Unfortunately, he was beheaded for this betrayal to the Lannisters, and this was considered an act of treason. It is important that Joffrey do everything in his power to maintain likeness to stay on the throne. Strategic vision can be defined as what the long-term view of the firm or kingdom will look like in the future. To reach this vision, the Lannisters agreed that Joffrey's engagement to a traitor's daughter, Sansa, wouldn't look good to the people. Sansa and Joffrey's engagement was called off, and Joffrey was to be wed to the Marjorie Tyrell of Highgarden. When Joffrey and Marjorie were married, Joffrey had his midget brother, or uncle Tyrion Lannister, wait on him and hand and foot. Tyrion was made out to be a fool, forced to fetch wine for his new king as the cupbearer. Tyrion would soon realize that he had been framed for the murder of King Joffrey. Joffrey requested Tyrion fetch him some wine, and it was then that the day took a fatal turn. Frothed at the mouth, he collapsed to the ground, pale-faced and spasming to his death. Cersei sprang out of her seat and ran over to her son. He died right there in her arms, and this is the first moment viewers feel the pain that Cersei Lannister felt.